This problem here exercises entropy balance of an ideal gas. We have air entering a turbine. I'm just going to go ahead and draw the schematic out. So essentially, we have a turbine. Air is going to run through it at 8 bar and 1400 Kelvin. And then it's going to exit, and we're just told that the exiting pressure is 0.8 bar. Also, we're given that the heat transfer is zero, as we're told that it's well insulated. And we're also told that PV equals MRT is valid in this case, but more so we're just going to need the ideal gas relation for the entropy balance. So we're asked to find the maximum theoretical work, so that word there is important, theoretical work, that can be developed by the turbine, and it's going to be kilojoules per kilogram of airflow. So um, let me just write this out. So remember that the work of a turbine, so work of a turbine, is equal to the mass flow rate, or just the mass, times the inlet enthalpy minus the exit enthalpy. Now, there's a little bit of a twist on this because we're looking for isentropic work and we're looking for work on a per unit mass basis. So we, div we divide both sides by the mass flow rate or just the mass, it's not a flow rate. So we have the work of the turbine divided by the mass is equal to the inlet enthalpy minus the exit enthalpy. And remember that it's isentropic. You're looking for the maximum ideal work, which means that the inlet entropy is equal to the exit entropy. So we, just, we denote that by an S on the outside there and an S on the exit enthalpy. This expression here is all we need to find the work on a per unit mass basis. And we can find this inlet enthalpy pretty easily. We're given 1400 Kelvin, so we just go to our properties table and we turn to table 822, we go to 1400 Kelvin, right over here, and you have the entropy is 1515.42. So let me fill that out. So 1515.42, and that's kilojoules per kilogram, which is the unit you're looking for, which is nice, minus, and then we don't have that exit entropy, enth sorry, enthalpy yet. So work of the turbine, isentropic, Per unit mass. So obviously the real work is trying to get that H2S or your ideal exit enthalpy. And all that really means is in an ideal world with no irreversibilities, your exit enthalpy from this turbine would be this H2S. But obviously irreversibilities do happen in real life, so it would be an H2 without the S if we're talking about actual, depending on the turbine efficiency. But before I complicate things any further, all we have to do is the entropy balance. So the formula for that is the change in enthal entropy, sorry, change in entropy is equal to S2 minus S1, exit minus inlet. And that's going to be equal to, for an ideal gas, and this is only an ideal gas, is going to be S0 of T2 minus S0 of T1 minus RLN of P2 over P1. So in simple terms, S0 is kind of like your specific entropy for an ideal gas, and then you just have your gas constant and then your pressure ratio. So obviously being an ideal process, you'd have the S2 minus S1 and our change of specific entropy being equal to zero. So we can simplify this whole thing right over here to zero is equal to, so now we need S naught of T2. So S naught of T2 is going to be an unknown here. We don't have T2. That's actually what we're gonna be solving for. So S naught of T2 minus S naught of T1. So again, we're given T1 is 1400 Kelvin. So we go back to this table over here and we see 3.362 is our value. So minus 3.362 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin minus gas constant of air is 0 0.287 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And then LN of P2 over P1 is going to be 0 0.8 over 8. And the units don't really matter here. We don't have to convert to kilopascals because it's just a ratio. If you multiply both sides by 100, you're going to have 80 over 800 anyways. So anyways... We just have to rearrange this and solve for S0 of T2. And when you do that, you'll have S0 of T2 
is equal to 2.7012, and that's kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Now we're going to use this to, we can actually use it to get our temperature, our exit temperature, if we're interested in that. But in this case, we don't really need that. We can just go straight into the enthalpy. So we use 2.7012, and we see that it's somewhere between these two numbers here. It's very close to the uh, 790-810.99 number, but... We're going to see where it is, and it's going to be some, the exit entropy is going to be, sorry, exit enthalpy is going to be somewhere between those two numbers. And when you interpolate that, you're going to find that H2S, because it's isentropic, is going to be equal to 808.78, and that's kilojoules per kilogram. Now we can just plug that back into our equation up here, 808.78. And if you plug this into your calculator, you'll have your final answer of 706.64 kilojoules per kilogram.